Here we are again with Unit 10, Soybean Diseases in AGRC 223, midpoint of the semester or so here uh, in our content. So let's get right to the soybean diseases that we want to discuss that are semi-common to this area. First one is bacterial blight, uh, a leaf occurring disease that can cause uh, some uh, angular spots on the leaves, uh, yellow turning to brown and black. And usually you see defoliation begin to occur with this one, which is actually a common uh, symptom of a lot of things in this particular section is, is uh, leaf defoliation that you have to watch for. Um, then moving on, it, it will actually spread from the leaves to the stem and spread somewhat rac rapidly through the field. Again, this bacteria is seed borne. Um, so with today's much more common, accept commonly accepted practice of buying seed from year to year instead of replanting bin run seed uh, has cut bacterial blight back drastically on their incidence rates uh, because it does overwinter on the dead leaves. So any crop rotation probably knocks this out in most of today's management systems, plus uh, good quality uh, cleaned seed that's been taken care of well from your seed supplier. Next is bacterial pustule, again a foliar disease, uh, light green spots developing to red and brown and again uh, defoliation occurring. Another one that overwinters and stays on some diseased seed and uh, stays in diseased plant materials. So again, crop rotation should take care of this one. If you're planting beans on beans, uh, even with purchased seed, this would be something to occasionally worry about, especially in warm weather disease developing after bacterial blight. So kind of a cousin or related to the prior one that we talked about. Moving on to things that are a little bit more common uh, in this particular area, and that's sclerotinia stem rot, uh, very common for the Corn Belt states. And you'll see actually a mold disease that migrate, that's actually migrated from edible beans. Usually requires a, a cool, wet summer, so you know, weather conditions may dictate whether you see this particular problem out there uh, year to year. Again, the spores infect uh, the bean once it goes into bloom, and so during pod development is when it actually begins to show itself. And the leaves will actually turn gray uh, before dying and defoliating. And there's really not very much effective control of this one. There's, there's not much you can do once this particular problem sets in. Next one is Phytophthora uh, root and stem rot. Again, one of the most serious soybean diseases in the United States at this point in time. Uh, soybean phytoph Phytophthora is something to very much scout for. Uh, usually occurs when exposed to cool, wet conditions on poorly drained soils. Well, if you think about southern Illinois and our beautiful clay soils, planting soybeans and getting them out of the ground early in the spring, you know, we're talking uh, late May, early April, whenever it could be a cool, long, cool, wet spring, uh, this is one that's a particular problem for those because it'll kill the seed and kill the emerging seedling at germination. The, the seedlings will be kind of water soaked and the disease, the, the disease kind of attaches itself to older plants and you can kind of see a, a dark brown discoloration from the soil line moving uh, upward on the stem. You can find actually secondary infections that, are, that occur on some of the other healthier plants neighboring and it will look actually just like a, a mold on the top of the rotting areas. Below ground, the taproot actually is rotting right off of the plant. And this, the root system then, uh, of course, is killed back right along with it. So control methods, again, fun fungicide seed treatment is really taking care of a lot of this. And if you don't plant, um, if you don't plant treated seed, this is one to be aware of and scout for early on in the season, especially if those weather conditions are just right. And there are some res resistant varieties out there. And here's a picture of what some of that might look like. And you notice in the background, a, a normal healthy plant in the background, and then a completely dead plant right next to it. But certainly one to pay close attention to as you're out scouting those soybean fields uh, after emergence and through the growing period. Soybean brown stem rot is caused by a fungus that inhabits the soil and actually decays and, and deteriorates the plant from the inside out. It's one of the uh, most odd diseases of all the ones in any of the plant species that we talk about all semester long here. Uh, it attacks the plant kind of early in the season, but because this one grows and develops and infects the plants at such a slow rate, you probably don't see it until... Uh, let's say middle of the summer whenever 
you know, stress begins to set in and uh, maybe um, now it's caused just enough damage. But essentially, if you cut that stem open, I believe I have a picture here coming up on the subsequent slide. The interior of this stem is, is basically rotting right out of it. Uh, so very unique as it takes uh, takes effect on that interior of the plant. So if you find this uh, happening in your soybean fields, it's recommended to rotate that out of soybeans for a two-year time period uh, because, again, a soil-borne uh, problem that can cause this to set in in your field. So here, here are some leaf effects of that. But the most important picture, here's a here's a side-by-side a normal healthy soybean stem on the right. You notice good normal he healthy white tissue where those uh, vascular system of the plant working and functioning properly. And then a soybean brown stem rot uh, affected plant on the left. Looks like cardboard almost on the inside there. And you notice already the skin of the plant, the, the exterior of the plant uh, is turning brown as that thing dies off. Pod and stem blight uh, problems occur basically wherever soybeans are grown. Uh, can be heavily dotted, kind of spore-filled sacs on the pod. Uh, probably most problematic is, is if it girdles the stem and kills that plant off. Then uh, obviously we've prevented or cut into seed seedling development. Uh, but that fungus can pen penetrate the seed and destroy any subsequent germination of that particular seed. So something to be aware of as you have pod damage out there. Again, overwinters uh, survives on infected seed, uh, but you can rotate crop and pretty well take care of this, and good quality disease-free seed is cut back again on this one as well. Downy mildew, uh, as we turn our attention to that one, is much more common in the area. Another fungal disease, seed-borne, um, you know, could, could be out there as a problem. Uh, I've heard reports of this one occasionally here in the past. Uh, the first leaves are infected kind of as they unfold with that mildew right on them. It's, it's a very odd one, and but once you've seen it, you can pick it out quite commonly. Uh, as a newly unfurled seed uh, or newly unfurled leaf should not have a mold on it right like that. Though control, uh, really no resistant varieties. So you just uh, your crop rotation tillage and, and uh, buying good disease-free seed usually takes care of this one. Next is purple stain, and I'm sure that most of you, if you've handled soybeans, you've probably seen purple stain uh, on a seed. It's either pink uh, to dark purple stain on the seed, and generally it, it reduces seed value in the market. Now, does it cause yield loss? Not that appears to be statistically significant, but it just looks bad. As a grain grader uh, gets a sample of seed as you deliver it to the elevator, it tends to not look as good. And, and so you could see some diseased uh, seedlings die, but generally speaking, uh, there's a little, there's some effect to how that seedling may have a, in terms of germination rate the next year. Uh, but in terms of total yield, uh, not not common in terms of great big yield losses. This one here, Asian soybean rust, is one that. Um, is kind of keenly on the radar of soybean producers. If you go back about 10 or 15 years, um, the United States was certainly free of Asian soybean rust and not one that, that they had ever, ever dealt with in the U.S. Uh, obviously, apparent to the name, it is native to Asia, uh, but has slowly made its way across the globe and uh, resided for quite some time in South America. And then just the wrong hurricane uh, tend, brought those spores uh, to the southern United States. And when that happened, uh, the U.S. did not have any defense system for this particular problem. And the reason why I'm making such a big deal about this as we go along, because this one causes probably the greatest yield loss uh, of any of the soybean diseases that you can imagine. Very severe foliar damage. And this one is unique when you talk about uh, fungal problems because once that spore lands on the leaf and is able to germinate, it doesn't need any kind of stressor to help it do that. Uh, it doesn't need any break in the leaf tissue. It doesn't need any um, broken piece in the stem. It doesn't need any stressor in terms of heat or cold. Uh, it can easily infect a a perfectly healthy plant and destroys the photosynthetic tissue and so you see early defoliation and early maturation of the plant. 
Chinese experience with this, yield losses are up to 80%. And they have tested, and it's been replicated in research situations in South America, that just six hours of the wrong condition and temperature uh, combination, and notice the range there, 59 to 82 degrees. Well, that's very, very common in the U.S. during the early, early growing stages and maybe you know late May, early June. Uh, even sometimes through the month of June. And then that six hours of conditions um, creates the perfect environment for this one to develop. And then once it starts, it is extremely difficult to stop. And so as it was introduced in the United States, like I said, about 15 years ago, uh, folks were really, really scared that this would cause a major crop loss for the U.S. soybean market. Luckily, it didn't that first year. Um, and now we're developing... Uh, fungicide to be able to treat it, prevent it. But if you hear tell of this one coming along, be active in scouting your crop and tracking this particular disease because it does have the capacity to cause catastrophic yield losses. Again, talked about those spores penetrating the cell. So basically, uh, there's about a nine to 10 day cycle from initial infection to spore production again, and then any wind is going to carry that off. Common hosts for the spore for this fungus is kudzu. That's the most common one. Uh, then also vetch and yellow sweet clover, which we of course have quite a lot of that. It's thought that it does not overwinter this far north, but uh, does when you get south to the southern states, Alabama, Louisiana, uh, and so forth, and spreads with the wind patterns. Here's a close-up picture of what the spore and what the lesions look like on the underside of the leaf. That's the important place to look. Uh, if you find that it's coming along and here's what as those spores develop and again gets ready for spore production again and then here's a side-by-side -side, uh, an infected soybean field I believe this picture was actually taken outside the United States the researchers that have been following this one were very very careful not to introduce this uh, even in research situations in the US uh, for quite some time and of course now we don't maybe have to worry about that so much because it's here. But infected soybean field on the right treated, uh, on the left treated with fungicide and a no treatment on the right side. Uh, notice the stage of growth and development, but even on the left side as it's treated, you see some uh, irregular leaf um, color and defoliation already, you know, still occurring even after the treatment. You would have to be right on top of the, the appropriate treatment time. So that wraps up this section here on uh, Unit 10, Soybean Diseases. Again, can't stress enough, be active out there and scouting your crops so that you can be proactive in controlling any diseases that may be setting in and protecting the yield that you've got. That'll take care of uh, Unit 10, Soybean Diseases.